Hello and welcome to the second video in this series of demonstrations that we're doing on Windows 10 in the Enterprise. So in the last uh, demonstration, what we did was we um, showed a machine where we installed Windows 10 ADK and after installing that we created a boot image. We customized the boot image by adding certain drivers, in this case some Hyper-V drivers, we injected those into the image uh, offline. And also we added certain components like support for Windows scripting host, support for Windows PowerShell, support for um, .NET FX. And um, after doing that, we saved the customized boot image and we made an ISO out of it. So you might be asking in this case, what are we gonna be doing with the ISO that we've created? So everything again seems disjointed at this point. Like I said, before also we have this machine called Lon Client one, which is the one that we've been doing um, the administrative tasks that we've been doing so far. We've not touched this at all. Um, then we have Lon Client five. So what we'll be doing with Lon Client five in this case is we'll be using this as a reference computer. Now for those who are not um, familiar with the term reference computer in the enterprise, what usually happens is in an enterprise you have um, lots of machines and usually of similar hardware types or models. So what you typically have is you have a particular machine which you call like your reference computer sort of. And what you do is you install um, the operating system that you want on the reference computer. You make the customizations that you want. So you have to be careful here because there's a balance between putting everything into the image and putting only the necessary things and then using a more advanced tool like SCCM. Um, which, um, just to plug this in, we are currently discussing SCCM in our MCSC study group. So we have a group online where we meet regularly so if I go look look up that and then show you that. One minute. Yeah. So we have a group online where we regularly meet and we discuss different uh, Windows technologies. So if you go uh, to Google Plus and if you look for this group called MCSA 2012 Study Group, so we meet regularly to have these hangouts. And it's a really active group and I'm sure you enjoy it. Okay, so um, yeah, what brought me to <laughs> SCCM is because that's what we're discussing. So you, you have your reference computer, you install the operating system that you want, you customize it and then you capture that image. Um, but also when you're doing the installation, so normally we're used to, whenever we're doing Windows installations, most people are already used to, you know, put in the Windows CD, you know, go next, 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 select the settings that you want. But in this case, we're talking about an enterprise, which means we have multiple machines. You really don't want to be doing that. And uh, you want to automate things as much as possible. So Microsoft, one of the methods that they've provided, this is not the only method, but one of the methods, it's using something called Windows SIM. And what Windows SIM allows us to do is to kind of create something called an answer file. And the answer file would basically um, mean putting your CD into the um, CD drive of the machine, the bare metal machine. And then what will happen in this case is um, the CD you're putting into your operating system installation CD and the operating system installation CD boots up and then as it boots up um, it discovers the answer file and then uses that to answer all the things that you typically have to click next 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 so just making it automated so you create the answer file ahead of time um, package that alongside your um, installation media and then the operating system can run without you uh, having to click next, um, next, next finish. So that type of deployment is called unattended installation. So the other thing is to warn you about this, and this this kind of like the kind the things that you may not hear if you go for many training. Like Microsoft Official Training will tell you about this, but again, just what we're doing, it's not as if it's useless. It's not useless. It's useful. For example, if you're like a more small a smaller, very, very small business. This could be useful for you. I must warn you that this is typically not the kind of method you use in a wider, bigger um, environment. 
um, in a wider bigger environment, you probably be you know, using um, a tool by Microsoft called MDT, uh, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit to create your um, reference image and then capture that and then put that into SCCM. So all this, we'll be demoing all this as we go through this whole series. So just stick with our studio demonstration and you'll learn a lot. But the, the good thing is that even though this may not be what you'll be using if you're more of like a medium enterprise, the technologies that we're discussing here are actually the things that the tools that we'll be discussing later, like MDT and SCCM, they make use of all these technologies. SCCM makes use of Windows ADK. MDT makes use of Windows ADK that we used to create the custom boot image earlier. So they make, they make use of these technologies under the hood and just create like a layer of abstraction between you and this low level um, technology, so to speak. So let's move on and just create uh, our hands of how using Windows SIM. And so to do that, we'll first of all go back to our Windows ATK and then go to, so where do you have the um, Windows 10 installation media for the evaluation version already in our D drive here. And if I go under the sources directory, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the installation image, which is called install.wim. So I'll copy this and I'll copy this into my E drive here. And I'll explain the reason why we're doing this to you uh, later. So actually, let's just go here, yeah. paste. So once this finishes, I'll be back and we'll continue from there. Yeah. And the copy just finished now. So we've transferred the install.win file to our local drive. I'll show you the reason why we've done this transfer. I'll, I'll mention that to you as we go on. So the next thing that I'll do is um, in my computer, because I'm using an, an Hyper-V virtual machine, um, I've installed a virtual floppy device. So this is not a view floppy device. So you, you don't need to use this, uh, but you can just save save whatever you're doing locally on your machine but in this case i've just installed like if a virtual floppy drive in this case um let's quickly format that erase all the data from it because this virtual floppy drive is where i'll be saving the answer file that i'll be using okay so in that case let's go to the start button again let's go to how hubs and go on the Windows kit. And in this case, what we're talking about is uh, the Windows System Image Manager, which we'll be using to create the answer file. So um, this is an interesting one for the um, Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. I mentioned, made mention of that yesterday, but it's a really good one. We'll talk about that very soon. Okay, so let's open the Windows System and Image Manager. Um, Windows SIM and just to give you like a short of a view of this if you go on Google and if you Google Windows SIM probably come up with this um, page so this second option here which is technical documentation for Windows SIM it goes into like a lot of details again because this is dem demonstration not really like an explanation so to speak um, so it goes into like a lot of details you'll see a few of this so you can see answer file overview and it tells you what it looks like different configuration passes uh, which you just see a demonstration of that. So right there, we have Windows SIM opened. Um, so the first thing we do whenever we have Windows SIM open is we have to select the image that we want to create an answer file for. So if I go File, Select Windows Image, and I go to the location where I transferred the image, install.wim, and then, so here you see, it says the catalog file for Windows Image Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation version cannot be opened for the following reason. Can I find it? I want to create it. Basically saying I can't find a catalog file, I need to create one. So this is the reason why we copied it from the CD drive to our local hard drive. Because it's going to create this catalog file. Um, it has a .clg extension. 
and it's going to create it right where uh, install images. So if that were to be on your CD, obviously you can write to that, except you've got like a writable DVD drive. So you can write to that typically, and that means you won't be able to create a catalog file. So that's the reason why we've copied it locally. So if I go ahead and click yes to that, then you're going to see a catalog file get created. So this may take a while. But you see, eventually you see a catalog file right here. And then we can continue. I'll pause the recording again. Okay, so that took a while. Um, so I think that took about five minutes uh, to create the catalog file. So at the end of it, you see we have a file here with a .clg extension. And that's the catalog file um, for the Windows image. So the next thing that we're going to do is after, again, first thing we did is to add the image, create the catalog file. Then we can go new answer file. So new answer file will create a brand new answer file where we can now select components um, from this Windows image and put them into that answer file. So we have this different component uh, that belongs to different faces. And if, if all these, again, if all these don't make sense to you now, just um, carry on with it. You know, there's a, there's a place for discussion and discussing the theory but then there's also a place where we do the demonstration and both um, parts of learning actually have their own benefit and have their own place so in this case i'm not going to be creating a brand new answer file i have an answer file um, already here that i'm going to be using sort of as a template so i'll go to file i'll click on open go under the c drive program files on the Windows kits, the directory where Windows ATK is installed. Assessment and deployment kit. Um, deployment tools, samples, unattend and auto unattend x64 BIOS sample. So I'll open that and this will give us like, do you want to associate this? Yes, I want to associate it. And actually I'll just go ahead and save it now. So I go ahead and go save and save file has. And I'll save this as auto unattend inside the virtual floppy image that we formatted earlier. So if I go on the, this PC, floppy A. An auto unattend is just the name that Windows will look for. Um, Windows has been programmed to look for this file whenever it's doing the installation. Okay, so save that. And then let's go ahead and modify this a bit. Let's let's do some modifications. So the way to really understand answer files is you see all these different components here, all these different what Microsoft called components or passes. So there are different faces of the Windows setup, like you have the WinP phase, the offline servicing phase, the generalized, specialized, the audit system, the audit user, and then the out of box system phase. So these are different faces of the Windows installation or Windows setup. As I showed you earlier, Microsoft has some good documentations about this. Again, um, answer files overview, Google that. And you see the component section of an answer file contains all the component settings that are applied during the Windows setup. Components are organized into various configuration passes, all these different passes. Each configuration pass represents a different phase of the Windows setup. Of Windows setup. Settings can be applied during one or more passes. If a setting can be applied in more than one configuration pass, you can select the pass in which to apply the setting. For more information about configuration passes, see this one. And of course, you can open that and just dive into this and do some reading about this. So, for example, we can see here where it says now our configuration passes work, the audit system configuration pass is one of the configuration passes used in audit mode. So audit user used in audit mode. Generalize prepares a Windows image to be deployed across many computers. Uh, offline servicing configuration pass is used to install packages and drivers and updates. So if, yeah. Um, our OB system 
also known as Windows Welcome, can be used to pre-configure user interface pages for an end user. Specialized configuration pass customizes a specific Windows installation to a specific computer. Windows P configuration pass is used to configure Windows P in addition to some aspects of the setup. So, I mean, all these, you can basically click all these and go into Microsoft's documentation one after the other. But um, I've probably said it a hundred times now, <laughs> or a hundred times now. Um, so, this particular forum, we're doing demonstrations. We have another forum where we do discussions, and that's in our Hangouts. So, just join our group and uh, let's discuss. Okay. So the first thing that we'll do is let's expand this Windows P configuration pass phase. And we already have certain components here. So if th this component here, what well, all you just need to do is look for whichever component you're looking for. Again, just look up Microsoft documentation on each, each of these components. And then you can right click on the particular component and then add it to the pass that you want. Now, some of them will only have one configuration pass applicable. Uh, and the others grayed out. Some of the some of them will have um, multiple configuration passes available. So if it has multiple available, it's like what the documentation said. You can choose which of the passes or which of the faces you want to apply this particular configuration item, so to speak. Okay. So I expand um, AMD sixty four setup neutral. Now click user data. And what I'll just be doing is type in the organization name. Um, in this case, we use another term. And I can type um, the full name, I'll just type admin here. So type in user information here. Um, because I don't want it to ask me for any product key. If I want it to ask for the product key and I want to actually put the product key inside there, I can. Put, put the product key here, but I'm not going to, I don't even want you to even consider that. So I'm just going to delete this completely. And then I'll go on the AMD, on the component here. I'll look for the unattended join. And this particular um, component item is used if you want to join a machine to a domain or a work group. So I'm just looking for unattend yep this one and again as we mentioned what you want to do is you can right click on it and add it so in this one we can apply it during the offline service in phase we can join the machine to domain during that phase or we can join it to the domain or work group during the specialized phase in this case we'll add it to the specialized phase and then it's added that component item here um yeah, so okay, let's go back to the answer file. So you can see here is a Windows image as the answer file itself. And let's go to specialize Windows shell setup neutral. And I can specify a computer name here. So again, if, if you're creating this or this from scratch by yourself, just look for this item, add it to specialize. So just look for AMD, Microsoft, Windows, Shell Setup Neutral, add it to specialize, and then you can put the computer name there. So um, in this case, computer name, um, or should I call the computer name? Uh, because this is my reference image. Again, remember that this is not long CL5 itself, so I'll call it reference. And if I go on the OEM information here, I'll just, so here's where if I want to customize uh, things like uh, the support item. So if a user goes on the system, if you want to customize support number, support details, you can hide it here, but in this case, I don't want that, so I'll just delete that. So on a ten join identification join domain if you want to join domain I can add join domain there. Or in this case I want it to join a work group. So I'll just put it there and 
the work group I wanted to join, I'll just call this imaging. Spell correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead some more components. So I'll go here and I'll add Microsoft Windows International Core. Yeah, here we go. And I'll add this to pass seven under the OB system. So add setting to pass seven. And then I'll look for the shell setup sort of similar to this one. And I'll add it to pass seven also. Shell setup new to Ah, oh, okay, sorry, this is the wrong one. My bad. I'm looking for AMD 64. Have to look carefully. Ah, oh, here we go. And then shell set up this one. Okay, so let's do some more editing then. So actually, I'll delete all this and go back to shell setup again. Let's expand disks. That's the other finish. You don't need to add the entire component. You can select the specific sub components that you want. Um, user account. Local account. Administrator password. Okay, so let's carry on. So then if I go back to my answer file here, and um, let's go to the international core here. So here I can specify uh, what the environment would be like. And in this case, I want everything to be US English. So I'll add English US to input local, which input local stands for the keyboard. And the UI, definitely that stands for the GUI. And the user local, I'll specify EN US also. Okay. Yep, done. So I can specify time zone here. So one one quick thing is that whenever you want to get what the time zone is, so there's a tool that comes with window called TZ or two. Yep, and they can use TZ to to display. For example, TZ to um, slash G just displays the current one Pacific Standard Time. In this case, I want the GMT Standard Time. So I'll just go GMT Standard Time. Actually, let's just go Pacific. So what I'm just saying here is, um, hey, for that, make sure the password, leave it empty. And I'll set a local account. 
also. So actually, I'll add this one because that's why I want the display name. I'll set that as admin. And then, yeah, so I think I've made like the customizations that I want to make in terms of the environment. So the other thing we can use um, the answer file to specify is actually install or specify certain packages to be installed. So in this case, I'll just show you an example of that. If I go under the Windows image section here again, and if I expand on packages, for expand on foundation, which, which is just the ones that come with Windows, imbued with Windows, uh, I can right click this and go add to answer file and then find it under the packages section here. Um, so here I can go to this one and I can look for the Hyper-V for example. Um, let's go back to here. Where is Hyper-V? Start that again. And expand this. Scroll down. Microsoft Type V. And enable it. Expand this. The Type V tools. Enable parent features, continue. I've got that enabled. Okay, so in this case, I'm not actually just installing the real client type of itself i'm installing the management tools and what i can do now is i can just save this as a file and then the next thing that we'll be doing so uh, okay and um, no the key name okay yeah that's another thing that we need to take note of is that you can actually go to there and click validate answer files and then it will show you if there are error messages if there, if there are errors in your answer file so it says the key and name of list item local account must have a value. So if I double click on it, it will actually take me there. Um, so it's saying, hey, you need to specify a value for the local account here. So I'll just type admin here again and go to tools again and validate answer files this time. So that's a good one. So in case you detect any errors in your answer file, what you can do is you can go, um, if you go to validate answer file, it will show you if there are any error messages. You can double click on that particular error message and it will take you to the exact place where that error has occurred. And you can make the corrections there and then validate it again, which I've done in this case. So I'll go ahead and save this answer file. And now I have an answer file that I can use. So what I'll go ahead and do is, because I'm using Hyper-V, is I'll go ahead and... Um, insert the Windows installation ISO into um, the Hyper-V bare metal machine. And then the other thing that I'll do is I'll put the Windows, um, um, the floppy drive that has the auto on attend XML file, which is the answer file. I'll put that in there. So whenever I boot up, so actually let's just go ahead and do that now. So I have client five here. That we're using okay and so right now um on this hyper-v system 
I already have um, the installation media in and I have the virtual floppy drive that contains the auto on attend XML file already inserted also. So let's go ahead and click. Then machine starts up. Let's see what happens. So if this works correctly, I won't have to go ahead and do, you know, and click next, next, next. All that should happen is this machine should go ahead and complete the installation using the answer file that I've created without me having to do anything, without me having to click anything. And the next time that I come back to the screen, uh, the installation is complete with all the customizations that I want. And yeah, so I think that'll be it for this particular demonstration. So in the next demonstration, I'll be showing you how to prep this particular reference image that we've created. Because again, this is not like a full deployment. This is a reference image that we've created. So how to prep that. Then we'll now take the customized boot image that we created in demo one. We'll take that customized boot image and we then use that customized boot image to boot up a machine and install uh, the reference image that will capture. If all that again doesn't make sense, just carry on little by little, it will become more clarity. And as you can see, I don't I didn't have to click next or click anything. It's just started the installation all by itself using the unattend file. So I hope this has been useful for you. I hope you've got something out of this. And I'll see you in the next demonstration. Um, thanks very much. Bye.